All right, how's it going guys? Tyler back here. So today we are going to install a ring doorbell at our house. And this isn't a sponsored video or anything. Um, we just happened to get one and installing it on this brick wall seems like it's gonna be a little weird because the brick isn't very even. Uh, so I had to come up with a plan that we're gonna see if it works out and uh, you guys will watch along the process, so. Okay, so for our case, for some reason they inset our doorbell a little bit inside of this brick here. So there's a giant hole and whenever I put the uh, doorbell over that it just looks the uh, doorbell just kind of looks pretty dumb in my opinion so we want to fill in that hole or cover it somehow and give us some really good mounting points on the brick another thing that we want to try and do is uh, instead of having the doorbell just face straight this way or just gonna be looking at a wall I'm gonna use this angled bracket that it comes with to get it to kind of face more towards the street and that will allow it to, I already tested it once, it allows the camera field of view to really reach all the way down to the end of our walkway here, or entrance, and you can actually already, or still see the door as well, which is kind of nice. All right, so what I'm gonna be using today to try and get this accomplished is I'm gonna use some one quarter inch uh, plywood that is for exterior use. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this uh, plastic spacer that allows it to have the angle um, and the wood the same color just to have those match um, and I'm just going to paint them a satin black hopefully that ends up looking pretty good um, in the end and I'm going to get started on cutting the wood um, and I'll see you guys once I've uh, got some of that done alright so I have my first piece cut out here and this will be the main one basically this will have the have this mount onto there like that and then I'll take the uh, ring doorbell and this will mount on there and the piece of wood will ideally be mounted to the brick wall. And since it's uneven, I'm going to actually cut a couple of pieces out here of the uh, wood here and try to kind of fill in the space behind that piece of wood so that it all fits in correctly in the end. All right, so I got everything cut up now. I think these are the final pieces I'll need. So I have the main plate, then I made a couple of little pieces that would be kind of like spacers between the brick and the mounting plate here. And those will just kind of fill in some of the gap. Okay, so now that we have this done, we're going to go ahead and cut out this hole and we will mock up the mounting plate onto this and see how it looks. So in order to make this hole, I think what will be enough is just to use this half inch drill bit and just drill a hole right in the middle there. That should be enough room for the two wires to come through and connect to our ring device. All right, so now that I have the two pieces cut out and that hole in there, I did decide to go ahead and dribble out a little bit of that with the jigsaw just to make the hole a little bit bigger. And I'm going to be using a uh, tight bond. Technically this is interior use glue, but we live in Arizona. I don't think this spot is going to like be getting wet very much or anything like that. So. I want to see how it works. Uh, if it doesn't work, I mean, this only took me maybe 20 minutes so far. So this shouldn't be too hard to recreate in the future if the glue ends up failing. All right, so it's the next day here. I have the mounting plate all glued up and I'm about to unclamp this. I'm gonna mock up um, mounting the ring to this and just see how it looks whenever I put it up there. Okay, so I have the ring mounted on here. Uh, if you follow the instructions, it's pretty easy to do. I actually used a couple of the screws that they give you to, in order to mount the angle bracket onto the piece of wood. And now if you hold this up here, since we have that hole there, it not covers everything really nice. Now I'm going to sand down some of the wood here and get some of the excess glue out of there. And then I'm going to paint the mount and the wood at the same time in order to get a consistent finish on those two pieces. All right, so now that I have the piece ready to be sanded, I'm going to use my Ryobi sander um, here and some 120 grit sandpaper and kind of sand down some of the edges to get the edges nice and clean. As you can see, those are kind of messed up right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and I'll get back to you once that's finished. Okay, so I did a light sanding on the plastic here and on the wood. And now that those are both sanded, I'm going to go ahead and start 
putting a layer of primer on them and then start getting the base coat of paint on there as well. Okay, so I just put down the first coat of primer, pretty thin coat as you can see, you can still see a lot of the wood grain, the wood and everything, it's mainly just to get the base coat down and then we can start working from there. And just so you know, I'm going to be using uh, some Rust-Oleum primer for this, just to get that, the wood to soak up a lot of that before I put down the base coat of paint. And then I will be also finishing it up with a satin finish for outdoor use. All right, so the wood is soaking up the paint quite well. Um, so I'm kind of probably gonna do a couple more coats of primer on that one. The plastic went pretty easy. Uh, as you can see, like the sides of it, that plywood is obviously gonna soak up a lot of the paint. And I know that going in. Okay, so the pieces are coming together pretty good. They're still wet, so I'm gonna let them dry for a little while and put another coat of the black paint on this. As you can see, there's still some white showing through. The wood grain is really soaking up the paint in certain areas, but then kind of gumming up on others. So I might have to let that dry a little bit longer um, before I paint that part. All right, so it had been about 15 minutes. I just sprayed one last coat of paint on the pieces. And now that the paint is built up enough, I'm gonna let this dry for about 10 to 20 minutes and put a coat of clear, satin clear on these just to give them a little bit more protection. All right guys, so I just got that last coat of clear coat on there. I'm gonna let this sit for quite a while, whatever the bottle recommends. I think it's around four to eight hours or something like that. So I'm gonna let that sit for the rest of the day. And then tomorrow or later tonight, I will be putting it together and trying to wire up the doorbell. So uh, I haven't tested that part yet. I'm pretty sure it should work. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward. So I'll see you guys when this is done drying and we will get stuff done. Okay, so it's been about a day now. So the paint is dry. As you can see, if I can place these on top of there, it looks pretty good. The matte color matches pretty well, um, which is what I was going for. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try and map out how I want this to mount onto the brick. Um, just looking at this piece, I'm kind of hoping, you kind of see those little divots there on the plastic. I'm hoping that I can line those up to the brick pretty well. Um, and then be able to just drill a hole through here and drill these screws um, into the brick through this and mount the plastic and wood at the same time. Uh, I'm going to see if that works out now. Okay, so I'm just kind of lining this up here and as you can see those two holes in the top there are a decent amount into the brick on all four corners. So I think that will work um, for my mounting. I'm going to drill small holes through those circles and I'm gonna see how I can mark it onto the brick and then drill the holes into the brick in order to mount the ring doorbell. Okay, so now that I have the plastic bracket mounted to the piece of wood, I'm going to take a drill bit that's approximately the same size as the screw and drill four holes, one on each corner into the plastic piece through the wood. This is the screw hole that will be used to mount the entire assembly to the brick. Okay, so now that I have those four holes drilled, um, one in each corner, and I'm gonna take off the plastic bracket again, and I'm going to use that to mark where the holes will be on the brick. So I basically just took a level to make sure that the doorbell would be level in the end, and I had to take a, or take a few screws and screw them into the plastic so that I could kind of see where that hole would be through the depth because the marker would not reach through the hole far enough to be able to mark on the brick. Um, so I did that and then stuck it in there and marked on it. Um, as, I, as you can probably see, it's pretty hard to tell, but there's little black dots where my mounting holes will be. Uh, those two are kind of harder to see, but I can see them in person. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill those out and put the mounts in so that I can mount the doorbell. Okay, so for the mounting to the brick, it seems that I have misplaced one of the um, inserts for the screws. So I went out and got this, and I actually also heard that the bit that was provided is not very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this drill bit here, and these mounts, uh, and these screws should be a lot better for holding it into the brick too. So uh, we're gonna see how that works, um, and I'm gonna start drilling some holes. 
All right, so I'm back out here. I got my drill. Um, I don't have a stop depth on this because the mounts I got say to weave the hole two inches deeper than the size of the um, insert. So uh, this, this drill bit is basically that size. So I'm just gonna basically go all the way in as far as I can. Okay, so I have a few of the holes drilled and something I'm kind of noticing is getting the holes aligned properly is pretty tough with this big drill bit. I almost wish I would have taken Maybe just a smaller drill bit and started the holes that I would have a hole to um, start with. Um, but I have three holes drilled right now. The fourth one is starting to kind of go off because of the hole that was next to it. So I'm just going to probably try and use the three holes that I have mounted right now. Uh, the actual instructions say you only need two on their little sliding um, mount there. So. I think if I can get two or three of them on there, it'll be good, uh, but these ones also don't line up perfectly. So hoping that it'll work out. Um, so here, let me show you the holes here. Okay, so I have a few holes drilled out now. This honestly took quite a while, maybe like a half hour to get these things drilled out. Um, but what I did was basically just took the drill bit and tried to keep it as straight as possible and then sprayed it down with some water every once in a while to keep it from getting too hot. I actually was able to get through these two holes pretty easy, but then whenever I started on this one, it started hitting some rocks, which really stopped it up and was heating up the drill bit a lot. So that took a little bit longer to do. But now I'm gonna pound in a few of these and try and mount the two pieces on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these holes a little bit bigger that go through the, the uh, plastic in the wood so that I can maybe try and angle the screws just a little bit to be able to hit at least two of the uh, three holes I have drilled. Um, I'd like to at least probably hit these two corners uh, because I think that will be strong enough if I get two of them in there. I'm gonna get that done and I'll get back to you once I have those drilled. Okay, so I have these holes drilled down a lot bigger now. Um, so as you can see, I can actually take the screw and just drop it in there and go right in. So I don't have to have to try and screw through this and through the mount at the same time. All right, so some of you guys probably would have noticed my mistake here. Um, I just realized it too myself. So whenever I went to put the holes on the wall or the marks on the wall, I only used the bracket that came with the with the ring. And that's kind of messed me up now because I didn't take into account that I had those spaces in there for uh, the over, I guess, to fill in those gaps behind the ring. So I'm kind of stuck right now. I'm gonna have to uh, come back to this later. All right, guys, so it's actually later the night that I actually just found out that that was a problem. Um, and good news is I think I'm going to be able to salvage this piece. So what I did was I used a saw and just kind of cut vertically in, on both directions and then took one of these guys, coping saw, I believe it's called, and cut out the entire piece. So right now what I'm going to do is go see if I can mount this up. Um, and if I can, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, dismantling the actual doorbell and wiring everything up. All right, guys, so I'm out here now. I'm going to remove our old doorbell here. And it's kind of weird because they inset it into the bricks um, and it's actually kind of grouted around it. So I'm going to take a flathead and hammer and just kind of chisel around it and see if I can get that thing pried out of there. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of pried it out a little bit already, but I'm just taking the hammer and chiseling it out of there a little bit. Um, I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out now and get the wire sorted out. Okay, so I have the doorbell completely removed now. Um, now what I'm gonna do is look at the instructions for the ring and see if I can find anything telling me which wire goes to what. Okay, so now I have the doorbell removed. Uh, from the wall and so what I'm going to do now is remove the wires from the doorbell and then mount the uh, the uh, Mount for the ring doorbell once I have that done then I will grab the ring doorbell and start getting that wired up um, I believe I have a chime doorbell so or Chime tone so I'm gonna have to use the little diode that's provided In order to have it work with our existing doorbell Okay, so the first step I'm taking with the wiring is actually extending the wires because they're pretty short. I and mean, that's about as far as I can get out, come out of the wall. So I added the little included extensions and now I will be grabbing the ring and wiring those two things up. 
All right, guys, so I have the stuff mounted up. I wasn't able to get the wiring of the doorbell working. Uh, I think it's maybe our chime is not compatible with Ring. So we might either have to look into getting a new one or just run without one. I mean, it sends you notifications to your phone. So I think we'll be able to live without it. But I still do like the location we're putting it in right now. I would rather have the doorbell work properly, but that might be something I just have to do in the future. Um, doesn't really affect this video that much because this was more about getting it mounted onto this surface. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ring finished setting up and then show you the finished product. All right, so here's the finished product. The doorbell looks pretty good mounted on that bracket and you can't see you can't see any of the holes back behind where the doorbell is, which is what I was going for. And whenever you look at the side of the mount here, the wood covers up and fills in that gap fairly well. It's not as well as I wanted it to be, but it looks pretty good now. All right, so I think I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, consider liking and subscribing to see more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.